So we'll use what's called uh, a salt here. All right. So the idea is we're going to not ha just hash the password itself, but we're going to hash the password with a randomly chosen value that we'll call a salt. That sounds great. So we choose an salt pass and we compute the hash of the password uh, like this. Okay, when the password is originally entered, we choose the salt. Okay, now to verify, now I come up and I type in my password. How does it, how do I verify that? It's got this random blob in there. You have to use the same salt, okay? So it's not enough just to store the hash of the password. You have to store the hash of the password with the salt and the salt value too. Okay, so the salt value is there in the, in the password file. You've got the hash and the salt. Okay, now to verify the password, what happens? I type in my password, grab the salt value, the OS goes in and grabs the salt value out of here, hashes it, checks to see if it matches this, okay? But hey, does that do any good? That salt value's not secret anymore, right? Trudy can see that if she gets the password file. It makes it one time work, not one time. That's exactly right, okay, so that one time work is no longer one time. You have to redo your dictionary for each individual password you're trying to attack. So, I mean, this is like as close to a free lunch as you get in security, right? Okay. So the salt's not secret. And it's still easy to verify. And Trudy, the, the bottom line is Trudy has to recompute that dictionary for each individual password. We've done almost no additional work for the good guys. We made Trudy's job much harder. So it's a free lunch. And I guess that's why they call it a salt, because it has something to do with lunch. Okay, got that? Okay, that's, it's really a simple trick, but uh, very powerful. Is there a reason why it's called a salt? I, I don't know, off the top of my head. Um, okay, we're gonna just very quickly uh, kind of do some hand-waving arguments here for uh, uh, just kind of the arithmetic involved with the uh, password cracking. So we're gonna, uh, ha we have to make some assumptions here, uh, just to have some numbers to plug in. Uh, okay, so we're gonna assume we have a system, again, where all passwords are eight characters, but now we only have 120 choices for each character. So how many different passwords are possible? 128 to the 8th, also known as? 2 to the 56. Okay, so we have this many passwords. Okay, that's all the possible passwords we need to worry about. Uh, and let's suppose that we have a password file. So there's lots of users of this system, okay? And so the password file that's sitting there has 2 to the 10 different passwords in it, okay? So, password one. Is of size two to the ten. Okay. Uh, and the attacker tree has this dictionary of common passwords, and just to have a number, let's suppose it has about a million passwords in it. So, two to the twenty. Dictionary. I probably shouldn't write this right where I'm standing, should I? So right behind where I'm standing. Okay, anyway, let's suppose the probability now, from, from experience, Trudy knows that given any random password, the ch chance that it shows up <laughs> in her dictionary is about one fourth. Okay. Okay. Okay, got that? One fourth, just for any sort of randomly chosen password. Okay, the final thing we need here is that work is measured in terms of hashes. The number of hashes you compute is the amount of work. If you're just doing comparisons, just looking something up on the internet or whatever, that's no work at all. Okay, so work equals hashes. Okay, not that. Just to have some numbers. I'm not claiming these are necessarily uh, very precise. Okay, let's look at some various cases here. So, in the first case, let's suppose 
that Trudy wants to attack one specific password. So this is like the administrator password, right? She wants that one password. And let's suppose, uh, let's suppose she forgot her dictionary. She doesn't use her dictionary, okay? How, how much work is this? Oh, you don't have anything to go on. It's just like a brute force exhaustive key search, right? Without a dictionary, you just try them all. There's two to the 56, you try half of those, you expect to find it, it's two to the 55, okay. Uh, and so it's essentially an exhaustive key search. Now how about a salt? Does it matter whether it's salted or not in this case? Well, you know, this is probably too much. Nobody's gonna compute this many hashes and store them online, okay? So you really have to sort of do the work in real time and compute the hashes, so it doesn't matter whether there's a salt there or not. So it doesn't matter much in this case, probably. Okay, so let's do it a little more realistically. Let's suppose, uh, again, Trudy wants to attack a specific password, but she's gonna use her dictionary. Okay, that would only be sensible, right? You have the dictionary. I mean, you have one password, you have a dictionary. Go through the words in your dictionary, try to hash each of those, whether there's a salt or not. Okay, try to hash each of those guys. Compare it to the one password you're looking for. Okay, if you find it, bingo, you're done. If you don't find it, what do you have to do? It's not in your dictionary, so you have to go through all the other guys, all the two to the 56, okay? So start off with your dictionary, that'd be smart, but then try the other guys. Okay, well, how much work is that? Well, I mean, there's a chance it's in your dictionary. What is that chance? There's a one-fourth probability it's in the dictionary. If it is, how many hashes do you compute? You go through about half of them before you expect to find it. There's 2 to the 20, half of that's 2 to the T. If it's not in your dictionary, that's the probability, you have to do the exhaustive search thing, and so you're doing the 2 to the 55 before you expect to find it. So the expected work is, wow, almost the same as the exhaustive search. So you didn't really gain much by having that dictionary. But, the, you know, this is too much. You couldn't do this much work in practice, right? You couldn't do this much. So what would you actually do here if you're true? What would be the realistic attack here? Just try the words in the dictionary. If you find it, hey, great. If you don't, there's other administrators out there in the world. Right? Okay, so just use, you know, just try all the words in the dictionary. So the way you could say that is your maximum work would be two to the 20, and you'd have a one-fourth chance of success. Okay, so that's very realistic. You could certainly do that. Now how about if there's no salt? What's the attack look like in that case? Well, 2 to the 20, that's a dictionary, right? If there's no salt, you could pre-compute all those hashes. That's easy, right? That's all stored away somewhere. So that's, all, that's already been done. So how much work is it? Well, basically that factor goes away, but you're still left with this factor because you can't pre-compute all those guys. So, you know, sort of the ex true expected work is almost the same, but kind of the practical attack, right? The practical attack has like no work at all. You just look it up in that pre-computed dictionary, and if you find it, you find it. If you don't, you don't. Okay, the more interesting cases are the cases where you actually bring this password file into play. So you have more than one password. You're willing to, you know, any of these you're happy with. If you can crack any of these passwords, that's great. Okay, so to make it simple, or a little simpler, let's suppose Trudy's trying to attack the password file without a dictionary. Okay, so she doesn't use her dictionary in this case. Now, a couple assumptions here. Uh, we'll assume that all these passwords are distinct. That's just kind of a minor technical thing, not a big deal. But this is the crucial thing. Okay, we're really in the exhaustive search case because we're not using the dictionary. So what we need are two to the 55 comparisons, then we'll expect that we find a match, okay? Because there's two to the 56 different guys, maybe two to the 55 separate comparisons, I expect to find the match. It's always comparisons, okay? Okay. Okay, let's suppose no salt is used. Okay, now again, think of the, think of writing the code. How would you implement this if you're true? Well, what are you gonna do, right? You don't have a dictionary, you have a password file, there's no salt. 
list all the possible passwords, all two to the 56. Go grab the first one off your list. What do you do? Hash, Hash it, and then? Compare it to all. Compare it to all 1,024, right? How much work was that? How much work did I just do? One. I did one unit of work. How many comparisons did I get? 1,024. If you find it, you're done. If you don't, grab the next guy off the list, hash it, compare it to all 1,024. How much work? Uh, one plus one. I've done two. How many comparisons? Another 1,024. Okay, so you get it? We're doing 1,024 comparisons for each unit of work that we do. So how many hashes do I need to, how much work do I need to do before I get my two to the 55 comparisons? <laughs> okay, so the point here is each hash gives us two to the 10 comparisons. So I only need to do two to the 45 hashes to get the two to the 55 comparisons. Hey, 2 to the 45 is kind of within reach, okay? We could do that. Even for these large numbers, that's probably a feasible attack. So that's the no salt case. Now, if somebody's smart, they're going to salt these passwords. Now think about what you do. Same strategy, right? If you're trivia, you, it's like an exhaustive search. You list all the possible passwords. You grab the first one. You go to the list of the passwords in the file, and what do you do? Take the salt for the first guy, hash it, and compare. Take the salt for the second guy, hash it, and compare. Take the salt for the third guy, hash it, and compare. How many hashes? How many comparisons? Same number. Okay, so I have to do 2 to the 55 hashes. Okay, so it kind of shows that salting, at least in this case, is good, right? It increases the work factor, retrieval. Okay, but of course Trudy would use her dictionary, right? Okay, so she wants any password in the file and she wants to use her dictionary. This isn't the most interesting case. In fact, it's so interesting we're not going to go over all the details because it takes a while to do. But um, she wants any of those passwords with her dictionary. Now, one thing to note is the probability, each of these guys is in her dictionary. Each one has a probability of one quarter. So what's the chance that none of those guys show up in a dictionary? It would be like three fours to the 1,024. That's zero. Okay, one minus that, that says that's the probability at least one of these guys shows up in our dictionary. So the point is, with these numbers, it is for sure that at least one of these guys is in her dictionary. So you can, have, you can just forget the case where none of those shows up in her dictionary. It's not going to happen. For these numbers. So that simplifies things. You don't ever have to go outside your dictionary. Just look within your dictionary. Okay. Um, so we won't go over this, but uh, this is in the slides. You can look in the notes section. It's also in the book. It's done in excruciating detail there. But if you use a salt, the work is about two to the, a little less than two to the twenty-two. Um, if you don't salt, it's, a, it's really easy. It's a trivial attack. Um, but this is kind of the interesting case. Okay? <coughs> You've done everything right. You salted the passwords. Okay? Trudy got a hold of the dictionary. You know, like that, could, that could actually happen. So the attack is only 2 to the 22. Wow. That's better than nothing, but it's still pretty easy from Trudy's point of view. And in fact, you can show that the amount of work is roughly equal to, under reasonable assumptions, the size of the dictionary divided by the probability. So in our case, how big was the dictionary? What was the probability? You divide, what do you get? 2 to the 20 times 4, 2 to the 22, OK? Now, I'm not proving that. I'm just claiming that's true. But does it make sense? Well, OK. How can you make this work bigger for Trudy? That's what we want, right? We want to make that work bigger. How can we make it bigger? There's two ways you can make this number bigger. You can make it so that Trudy has to have a larger dictionary, or her probability of success is smaller, or both, right? That makes perfect sense. It's got to be harder for Trudy if her probability is less, or her dictionary has to be larger, or both. 